before I get into this video, I want to remind you we have a couple giveaways going on right now. One of them for a PlayStation 5, a Nintendo Switch, or an Xbox Series X. And also a second giveaway for two copies of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Now you could comment on this video, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, all that jazz. Go down to the description to find out exactly how to enter all this. And I wish all of you guys luck. Uh, winner for the console giveaway is announced December 1st. Winner for Pikmin 3 Deluxe, the two copies. So two winners for that will be announced November 1st. All right, let's get into this. We have an interesting story here coming from a French news website. Uh, this French website is capital.fr, and I happen to have a family member who is from France. Believe it or not, I have um, a background um, in my family history uh, from France, and I had them go over this article in and kind of just give me the abridged version of it to see if it lines up with Google Translate. And it, it turns out that it looks like it's possible that Ubisoft might be a buyout target. Now, to buy out Ubisoft requires a lot. Um, you have to own at least 51% of the shares to instigate what's known as a buyout. Now, famously, uh, Vivendi, or maybe inf infamously at this point, Vivendi was very, very close to buying out Ubisoft at one point, and it took the CEO and founder of Ubisoft, Yves Guillemot, a lot of uh, meetings, a lot of convincing to remaining shareholders to not hand over the rest of the company to Vivendi. And ultimately, his plea worked out. Uh, Vivendi sold off its shares, and Ubisoft was able to not be bought out by that company, which is a company that had previously bought out Activision. So we know uh, that Ubisoft has almost been taken over before. Now, some people might wonder, oh, you know, with all that drama at Ubisoft, some people have been calling for Yves Guillemot's head. But to be honest, if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be an Ubisoft probably to work at anymore anyways. So, uh, yeah, he's going to get a little bit more leeway than maybe people think he deserves. The bottom line is, this article, and I'm just going to read the translated version because what I was told was kind of a brief summary, uh, and I feel like the translation provides a, a little bit more context here. So um, here is what Google Translate is telling me. It says, Monday's announcement of Microsoft's takeover of video game publisher Bethesda is fueling speculation in the industry. Ubisoft looks like a target and could be prey for Sony, Google, or Amazon. The video game sector is booming. It must be said that the spectacular takeover announced the other day of game publisher Bethesda Softworks for $7.5 billion in cash by giant Microsoft has set fire to the powder keg. After having already been one of the few stocks to escape yesterday's general decline in the stock market, Ubisoft gained 3.38%, um, one of the strongest increases in the FBF 120 index due to its status as a potential target. Ubisoft stock is buoyed by speculation about its future as industry concentration continues. Indeed, after the acquisition of Bethesda, what will be the reaction of Sony or even more so Google or Amazon? LCM wonders. The research unit points out the targets of this size are very rare and Ubisoft happens to be one of them. Bethesda has, according to it, around 3,000 employees, which makes it a medium-sized publisher compared to the 10,000 or so employees Electronic Arts has or the 18,000 employees of the Ubisoft group. However, Vivendi's last attempt to buy out Ubisoft was unsuccessful. However, companies like Google and Amazon have much greater financial power. And what's interesting about all this isn't that I think Microsoft's going to do this because this is going to be more expensive than the $7.5 billion. They paid $7.5 billion for, uh, just for, what should we call it, uh, Bethesda. And like Ubisoft is like $6.4 billion or so cash like on hand in their bank. Um, let alone what that company is actually worth on the whole. To buy out Ubisoft is going to cost, I mean, $20 billion. It, it, It's going to be an absolutely insane number if anybody actually does it. So who would do it? Well, Microsoft, I don't think, is going to go much higher than the acquisition they already did of Bethesda. But I do think that there's going to be some companies seriously considering this. Uh, you could look at Google. Obviously, they have Google Stadia. They would love to lock up Ubisoft. Ubisoft was a very, very early supporter of Stadia. However, Stadia sells games in a traditional matter of $60 a pop. Uh, it's not really anything unique compared to the rest of the video game industry. And obviously, we know Stadia hasn't been doing so well. Is Google really going to pump that kind of money uh, into 
uh, into a video game company when the product they have created for uh, said said sort of acquisition isn't exactly taking off. It feels like another one of those Google products that's eventually going to just be dropped. All right. That being said, we have to consider, obviously, well, Amazon. Amazon just announced Luna. For those who don't know what Luna is, because unfortunately it happened at a time that I couldn't talk about it, uh, Luna is their streaming service, right? Amazon Luna is a streaming service, a subscription-based streaming service. It's like really, really, really cheap, like $6 a month. Uh, and you get access to a whole bunch of games. Now, that doesn't include Ubisoft's games. So it looks like Ubisoft is going to have a separate uh, subsection uh, subscription service in this. So kind of view it like when you go on cable TV and you have like your cable TV subscription, but then, you know, you have an HBO, a Stars, a Cinemax subscription. It's kind of like what's here. So you have your base subscription that gets you access to the indie games and, and some other companies' games. And then you have, obviously, the more premium subscription to Ubisoft. It gives you access to all the Ubisoft games. So it's kind of like a EA Access uh, except, you know, a little bit extra uh, in addition. The fact that it's only 6 bucks uh, for Luna is probably going to make whatever Ubisoft charge, charges, which is probably something like 10 bucks or less, pretty attractive on that platform. And Amazon is one of basically three companies in the world that have the sort of server infrastructure that could properly pull off game streaming, so it's believable they could do something. The thing is, Stadia actually works. It's just how they're... Uh, the, the how they're handling the money side of it uh, doesn't make sense to pierce the market. Now, we presumed xCloud from Microsoft was going to end up going the route of a paid uh, service fee like Luna, but Amazon has been buying up game companies, you know, quietly. We don't talk about it very often, but they, they have bought out a few game studios. Uh, now, we haven't seen the fruits of the labor yet, but they bought out a few of them. Would they be willing to sink $20 billion or so into buying out Ubisoft, and suddenly it becomes Luna exclusive. Obviously, Ubisoft and Use Game Out would do everything possible to prevent this. He, the current guy who runs uh, Ubisoft, does not believe in buyouts. He wants Ubisoft to remain independent. He thinks they're best that they remain independent. Their games end up being everywhere. They don't have any oversight to bigger companies. But on the other hand, they we are in well a pandemic still, and investors aren't going to necessarily turn down uh, the ability to sell out and make millions and millions and millions of dollars. So it's possible that the offer from you know someone like Amazon could be so overwhelming to investors that they would gladly give up their shares to get a, a, a big big payday uh, and set themselves up for the rest of their lives or children's lives or whatever. Uh, it, it's, it's just entirely possible that Amazon could do it. And remember, the guy who owns Amazon, who well, not really owns, but I guess runs Amazon, uh, is literally the richest guy in the world. So this $20 billion acquisition would be nothing for Amazon. So the question is, are they going to do it? Is Ubisoft going to get bought out? Or do does does Yves Guillemot have enough loyal investors on his side to prevent it? This is one thing that makes an acquisition of Nintendo very difficult. We've not talked about this much in the past because there isn't a realistic chance anyone could take over Nintendo at this point. But there are certain families that own huge chunks of Nintendo shares that prevents Nintendo from being a buyout candidate because these families are like literally totally loyal to Nintendo as a company and are not going to sell their shares. It's basically uh, something they just hold on to to prevent buyouts and hostile takeovers because that's what can happen if a company gets 51%. So uh, Nintendo is protected because they have very, they, they have a lot of shares with trusted uh, people that, you know, as far as we're aware, will not uh, abandon Nintendo. Ubisoft has some big shareholders that seem to be like that. But Vivendi was so close to pulling it off. Does he still have enough in a down economy worldwide that some investors wouldn't consider taking whatever is being offered and just cashing out? That is an interesting question. Now, this isn't going to affect anything with Ubisoft now or next year because right now these companies aren't doing anything that we're aware of. Again, this whole Bethesda thing has flipped the whole video game uh, situation on its head. And right now, anything is possible. Personally, I want Ubisoft to stay independent. They need to fix their internal stuff. Like, that's just, I'm not going to get into it, but Ubisoft has some problems internally they need to address. But I want them to stay independent. I think they're best independent. 
Um, you know, I know that I was kind of excited, I guess, a little bit by Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda. But part of that's because I think Bethesda needs some oversight to uh, fix some of their um, issues with their development string uh, and fix some issues in their engine. So I think Microsoft might actually be a benefit to them uh, in being able to provide money and backing to do some of those things and make the next Elder Scrolls the best it can be and all that. But um, the difference with Ubisoft is I don't think an acquisition actually improves the content. It just makes it platform exclusive. And we live in an age where platform exclusivity is a big deal. And you're going to see companies, especially with these streaming services, try to buy up a lot of these companies. Uh, you know, obviously, Microsoft is working directly with EA with EA Access. You know, I'm not saying Microsoft's planning to buy EA. I'm just saying that, you know, they seem to be trying to lock something up with them. You know, even if Amazon doesn't buy Ubisoft, could they lock something up with them and prevent Ubisoft games from being streamed on xCloud? There's going to be some interesting stuff happening. And uh, we'll have to see how this industry takes shape over the coming years. I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.